automakers and governments around the globe are poised to move electric vehicles in and gas and diesel vehicles out. The electric vehicle mega trend is unfolding and insiders know the time to get in on nickel and cobalt. The two critical elements to electric car batteries already in high demand is now. Don't miss this chance to get in on the opportunity to invest in physical class 1 nickel and cobalt before the mass market catches on. Go to www.silverbullion.com.sg slash EV and participate in the electric vehicle revolution. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Market Update, September 2019. Some housekeeping, if you are new to this channel or you have not already done so, please do subscribe, click on the bell to be notified on new updates, and do give us a thumbs up. If you like what we do, we appreciate your support. Really do. Let's start off by taking a look at two of our favorite electric vehicle battery metals, nickel and cobalt. Nickel is still holding the $17,000 to $18,000 per ton range up and doing well for the year, while cobalt has gone up some $10,000 per ton just since August and trekking upward. Both metals are on an upwards move where the forecast for both metals has continued concerns of supply not keeping up with demand. One of those suppliers is Indonesia, which has imposed a ban on nickel exports. From businesstimes.com.sg, nickel likely to hit U.S. 20,000 a ton on Indonesian ban, says Goldman Sachs. Goldman Sachs expects nickel prices to reach $20,000 a ton in three months, a level not seen since May of 2014, after Indonesia said it would expedite a ban on nickel ore exports by two years to the end of 2019. The ban would remove 10% of global supply and create substantial supply uncertainty. Nickel is used to make stainless steel and batteries for electric vehicles. Three-month nickel on the London Metal Exchange closed up 8.8% recently and rose as much as 3.2% recently to $18,470 a ton, the highest since September 15th of 2014. Keeping with supply and demand, but with a little twist, online retail giant Amazon has gotten into the EV revolution as well by investing in electric vans to be used for delivery. From electric.co, Rivian is going to make 100,000 electric delivery vans for Amazon. Amazon CEO Jeff Bezos has announced Rivian, an electric vehicle startup that took a $700 million investment from the online retailer, is going to make 100,000 electric delivery vans for them. At the National Press Club in Washington, D.C., Bezos announced plans to address climate change and the new electric delivery vehicles were part of the announcement. The CEO said that an arrangement was made official and Amazon is committed to buying 100,000 electric delivery vans from Rivian to be deployed between 2021 and 2024. To date, Rivian has only announced plans to build an electric pickup truck, the Rivian R1T, and an electric SUV, the Rivian R1S. It looks like Bezos jumped the gun and announced that Amazon was buying a product that hasn't been announced yet. But we are told that Rivian is going to announce more details next about its electric van. In February, Rivian took a 700 million round of funding led by Amazon. And at that time, they were discussing opportunities to work together. Rivian plans to bring its electric vehicle pickup truck and SUV to production late next year. Based on Bezos' timeline, it sounds like Rivian's new commercial electric van would follow soon after the consumer passenger vehicles. Now, Amazon just might be an up-and-coming player in the EV revolution, but moving forward to the big boys of electric vehicles, Volkswagen is set to grab a firm market share as it unveils its first electric vehicle with the focus on the masses. 
From TheVerge.com, Volkswagen unveils the ID3, its first electric car for the masses. Volkswagen has rolled out the final version of its first affordable long-range electric car, the ID3, at the 2019 Frankfurt Motor Show. Coming in at under 30,000 euros, the ID3 will come in three variants that offer between roughly 205 to 340 miles of range. The EV is slated to be delivered in mid-2020. That under 30,000 euro price tag, or just about 33,000 USD, VW's promoting applies to the base model of the ID3, which has a 45 kilowatt hour battery and offers 330 kilometers or 205 miles of range. The company declined to provide pricing information for the two larger capacity variants of the car, which will feature 58 kilowatt hour and a 77 kilowatt hour battery and will respectively offer around 420 to 550 kilometers per charge. VW says the base version of the ID3 will only charge at up to 50 kilowatts, and owners who want to charge faster, up to 100 kilowatts, will have to pay extra. A 100 kilowatt charging will come standard on the mid-range 58 kilowatt hour version, while even faster, 125 kilowatt charging will be available on the top tier ID3. The company is also offering an eight year, 160,000 kilometer warranty on the ID3's battery pack. The ID3, which resembles the German automaker's popular Golf hatchback, has the potential to be a very important car for VW. It'll be the first vehicle built on the company's new modular all-electric platform, one that will power dozens more cars and SUVs that are waiting in the wings as part of the larger Volkswagen Group's multi-billion dollar push into EVs. Price-wise, efficiency-wise, Volkswagen is hitting all the targets consumers want. Another big boy charging forward is Daimler. Daimler is ready to abandon the internal combustion engine in favor of, you guessed it, electric vehicles. Also from electric.co, Daimler stops developing internal combustion engines to focus on electric cars. After reining in the auto industry as the powertrain of choice for a century, the internal combustion engine is finally dying. Now, even Daimler says that it is stopping development of new internal combustion engines to focus on electric cars. The German automaker whose namesake, Gottlieb Daimler, is credited for having invented the prototype of the modern gasoline engine recently released in its latest generation internal combustion engine, and it might be the last. According to German magazine Auto Motor und Sport, Daimler development chief Marcus Schaefer said that they currently have no plans to develop a next generation combustion engine and they are focusing on new electric powertrains. While they will not invest in the development of new combustion engines, Schaefer reportedly noted that they still might work on some specific parts to improve on their existing engines. In recent years, there have been signs that internal combustion engines were reaching their limits. It became increasingly clear when the entire industry was caught cheating to make it look like their diesel engines were actually more efficient and less polluting than they actually were. Furthermore, generations of combustion engines have long development timelines and there are other factors that may render the investment worthless. For example, several countries are implementing or announcing their intentions to ban the sale of new gasoline and diesel-powered vehicles by 2040. This is pushing automakers like VW and now Daimler to rethink their long-term strategy for investing in powertrain development. Now, as time goes by, automakers will perhaps very uneasily have to let go of older internal combustion engine technology and move into non-combustion engine battery powered technology and that means automakers are going to have to either develop their own batteries or source out their batteries and sticking with daimler from reuters.com daimler to source battery cells from Faris energy 
Daimler has struck a deal to buy lithium-ion battery cells from Pharasys Energy, a Chinese-American supplier that is building a factory in East Germany to help Mercedes-Benz ramp up electric vehicle production. Pharasys is constructing the plant in Bitterfeld Wolfen in Germany's Saxony-Anhalt region, according to Marcus Schaefer. It will be a multiple gigawatt factory and it will supply cells for our battery plants in Kamenz, Brühl, and Sindelfingen, Schaefer said, adding that the energy needed to produce the battery cells will come from renewable sources. Farisis said it is investing 600 million euros to build the German plant. Daimler will use lithium-ion battery cells made up of nickel, manganese, and cobalt, our NMC for now. As other battery composition materials, which promise higher energy density, have not proved as reliable. Some of the new materials work in the laboratory, but not in the real world. Adding that experimental batteries often failed to withstand the vibrations and temperature changes that vehicles experience while driving. So Daimler is sourcing out batteries while... Others are taking battery power once again to a whole new level. GM is using words like advanced propulsion systems for electric vehicles and words like flexible and modular regarding electric vehicle designs. It's going to be interesting to see what they come up with because simply put, with just about every major car maker going electric, GM, once a powerhouse, is going to have to come up with something big. And it looks like they just might. From Reuters.com, electric pickup, batteries included in GM's $7 billion pledge. An all-electric pickup truck and an advanced battery system will be part of the $7 billion that GM has pledged to invest in the United States as part of contract talks with the United States auto workers the automaker and the union were continuing talks to resolve a strike by 48,000 hourly workers that shut down gm's highly profitable u.s operations gm said it would make investments in eight facilities in four states but did not specify timing location or products other than the electric pickup and a battery cell plant GM plans to invest both in advanced propulsion systems for electric vehicles and in core products such as trucks and utility vehicles that generate much of its profit. Some of that investment is earmarked for the production of electric vehicles in Michigan and battery cells in Ohio. GM is also expected to update plants in Michigan, Tennessee, and Missouri to build redesigned versions of its mid-sized pickups and crossovers according to a gm source the company said it will invest in additional new vehicle and propulsion programs but said nothing about opening new plants with as much excess capacity as gm still has the company won't be opening any new plants for the foreseeable future gm said it plans to introduce a stable of electric vehicles by 2023 but has not provided details. Sources have said those vehicles will feature an advanced battery system and a new vehicle structure that is flexible and modular to accommodate different vehicle types and sizes. Heading back to Singapore, we are seeing more private electric cars on the roads, more electric taxis on the roads, and we are seeing more chargers popping up all over the island. Singapore is an ideal place for electric vehicles. The weather is pretty warm all year long. It's relatively flat and there are short commutes. And now, as mentioned, more charging stations. And over in Singapore, todayonline.com reports that SP Group grows electric vehicle charging points to 200 island-wide, including the Central Business District's first fast charger. Utilities firm SP Group has expanded its network of electric vehicle charging points to 200 island-wide. In a statement recently, the firm said that among the 200 points are 52 direct current fast chargers that can fully power up a car in just 30 minutes. 
By the end of next year, the company aims to build 1,000 charging points, 250 of which will be fast chargers. The other 750 points will be alternating current ones, which take up to an hour for full charge. SP's latest expansion comes after tie-ups with landlords such as Capital Land, City Developments, Lend Lease, Resorts World, Sentosa, and Soil Build Group Holdings to install charging points at some properties. These include Singapore's first direct current points in the Central Business District, starting with the Republic Plaza. It raffles place the first commercial building in the area to house a fast charger. Other new charging points are in places such as Shaw Center, Resorts World, Sentosa, and Paya Lebar Quarter. Mr. Go Chi Kyung, SP's head of strategic development, said the firm's large public network of charging points would reduce range anxiety and shorten the time needed to charge electric vehicles. Our latest partnerships reflect the strong momentum by property owners to welcome electric vehicles. Drivers can use the SP Utilities mobile app to find the nearest charging points, receive updates on their charging sessions, and make payment. As Singapore moves forward with the rest of the world, these are interesting times indeed. Lifestyles, markets, market uncertainty, and technology are touching some aspect in all of our lives. And the metals at the heart of these changes, like gold, silver, nickel, and cobalt, all of these metals are sporting tremendous outlooks, and we do hope you visit us at www.silverbullion.com.sg to both learn about and perhaps even purchase these metals and invest in the metals that are going to influence the world you and I live in. That's it for this month's market update. Take care, everyone. Excited about the opportunities in the coming electric vehicle revolution and looking to invest in this electrification super cycle? Demand for battery metals like nickel and cobalt is expected to rise in tandem with the increase in demand for lithium-ion batteries in electric vehicles. You can now buy nickel and cobalt parcels with silver bullion and have a direct price exposure to both battery metals. You have the option to buy 2-ton nickel parcels or 250-kilogram cobalt drums. Every parcel will be fully insured against loss and guaranteed to be genuine by Silver Bullion. Selling your parcels to lock in profits is as simple as logging into your Silver Bullion account, selecting the parcels, and clicking Sell. Buy your nickel and cobalt parcels now at Silver Bullion's website, www.silverbullion.com.sg slash eb and participate in the electric vehicle revolution. Interested but have questions? Email us at sales at silverbullion.com.sg or give us a call at plus 65 6100 3040.